Hello, everybody. Welcome to FGI Toronto's Pride Panel. Um, I'm going to start us off with a land acknowledgement. FGI Toronto acknowledges that we are on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. FGI Toronto also acknowledges that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13, signed with the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Williams Treaties, signed with multiple Mississaugas and Chippewa bands. And I will pass it off now to our regional directors, Sofan and Lindsay, to uh, welcome everyone to the space. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, welcome to the Pride edition of our Education and Networking Series for 2023. Um, we are so excited to have you with us. My name is Lindsay Dukowski. I am a she, her, and I'm here with the amazing Sopan Chu. <laughs> Thank you, Lindsay. Hi, everybody. My name is Sopan Chu, and my pronouns go by she and her. And we are very proud to have everybody here on this amazing panel and every one of you to join us. So thank you for taking your time out of your day to enjoy this fabulous Pride celebration. So big thanks again for our host, Laval, and to our special friend, Glenn Baxter and Jessica Adario for their amazing support for sharing their space with us. And big shout out to our sponsors. Without you, this could have made it ha possible. Ziad and your amazing team at Smartwater. Uh, Michael and his team at Ciroc at Diageo Canada. Sally and her team at RH Beauty in the back. If you want to get a nice brow trim or like uh, some beautiful eyebrows, please visit them. Uh, we have Indeed Labs, Wella Hair Care and Sebastian Hair Products, OPI Nail Care, Blushy Eyes, and we also have Jean-Paul Gauthier Perfume. And big thanks to Nancy Kim Photography for setting up all the amazing photography and videography, our official photography sponsor. And big shout out to our wardrobe sponsors, Versace Canada. If you've noticed some beautiful uh, outfits here, that is uh, from uh, Dua Lupa, I believe the collection. Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa, sorry. I'm, I'm not up to my millennial talk, sorry. <laughs> and we also have Rocking Karma in the house. So thank you so much for styling our very amazing, talented host for the night. So back over to you there to start the show. Amazing. So hello, everybody. My name is Hilary LeBlanc, in case you somehow do not know me. Um, <laughs> I am secretary of the FGI board. My pronouns are she, her, and I identify as pansexual. I am so honored, thank you, um, to be co-hosting tonight's Pride panel with my best friend and the member of programming for our board, Mason. Hi, everybody. <laughs> So as Hillary said, I'm Mason. Um, I identify as he, him, or whatever you want to call me. Um, <laughs> I also am gay, if anyone didn't figure that one out. Um, also, I am part of the programming team, so me and my team put this lovely event together and the rest of the FGI board, so let's put our hand together for that. <laughs> so, sorry. Keep with me. I'm just getting my voice back. Sorry, everybody. Mason was unwell, <coughs> and this is his first night back in the room, and so we're very excited to. You're able to speak on the panel. You got this. Yes. So tonight we have beautiful panelists. We don't have our fifth one, unfortunately. She is sick this evening. They are sick this evening, and um, so we have lovely Dan, Miles Sexton. We have Victor Peters, and our lovely Nancy Kim. <laughs> Did I miss anything? Um, no, I don't believe that you missed anything. Um, if we asked um, if our, our lovely community to send in some questions via Q&A on our social media. So if you're not following FGI Toronto on our social media, make sure that you are. Um, some last housekeeping is that we ask that everyone remain at the tables during the panel and the lovely Lavelle staff will be able to serve you at your tables throughout. And thank you again to Lavelle. Uh, we want to remind everybody that after our discussion, there will be a lovely drag performance from House of Fantasy. Um, and to remember to keep your cash on you to tip those queens, please and thank you. Um, and lastly, there are some QR codes around some tables to donate to Zero Prostate Cancer, which is our um, charitable donation for the evening, as this is a Pride panel. And also, if you're interested in becoming an FGI member, those QR codes are around the room as well. Now let's get started with the meat 
of this evening, Nancy. I will start with you, and before I ask you any uh, hard-hitting questions, just a little brief bio about yourself and also to please share your pronouns for the room. Uh, my pronouns, uh, thank you. Oh, this is awkward. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Hillary. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Nancy Kim, and my I go by the pronouns um, uh, she, her. And um, a bit about, I'm a photographer. I, uh, I'm actually a Getty Images portrait photographer. I do shoot fashion. I do shoot uh, weddings and lifestyle. And um, actually, um, well, I started um, back in uh, back in the day. I, I used to do nightclub photography. If you didn't know me back in the day, so that's mm -hmm. what I used to do. And um, yeah, I, I think that's pretty much it. And I and, and I'm the sponsor photographer for FGI. So and yeah. Oh, amazing. Thank you. If you if well, you will see Nancy at future events, Nancy was at last year's events. Nancy's a big supporter of FGI. Miles Sexton, the incomparable Miles Sexton. Um, <laughs> if you, for anyone who doesn't know, if you could share your pronouns in your bio as well. So, hello, everyone. So, my name is Miles. I use they, them pronouns. And I guess a little bit about myself I am a content creator, I'm also an HIV, AIDS, and sobriety advocate. But I do a lot of work, especially around like sexual health, gender identity, mental health, and harm reduction. I'm, I think we're all pretty traumatized still from like sex ed class when we were in high school. So, you know, I'm trying to change the narrative with that, with my sort of series that I do online, and then you can also watch me on City Line as well for on Fashion Fridays. Okay, now down to the very fabulous Dan Dweer. So, tell everyone about you. Uh, thank you. I'm Dan Dweer, uh, he, him. I'm the owner of House of Dweer, a genderless fashion brand. Uh, I've been in the fashion industry for more than 10 years now. Um, have a custom-made background, so more for private clientele. Internationally, I'm from Switzerland originally. You can hear my accent, I guess. Um, and then I lived in the US and finally Toronto uh, that I call home. Uh, yeah, so my brand is really uh, focused about uh, creating genderless fashion to everybody that can, everybody can take and just style their own way and uh, interpret how they want. That's wonderful. And now off to the talented Victor. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Victor Peters, he, him. I'm a celebrity and drag makeup artist. Um, I was born and raised in Mexico. I'm of German background, but born and raised there. And I moved to Canada just over 10 years ago now. Yeah, that's a little bit about myself before we get into everything else. <laughs> Amazing, thank you guys all so much. Um, I'll start off with a general question that will uh, get asked to everybody. So tell us a little bit more about your work and art, but in terms of your queer journey in the fashion industry, and to you, Nancy Kim, since we're starting with you, what is the importance of queer LGBTQIA2 plus representation within the fashion world? Uh, do you also want me to repeat it? <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. That's a mouthful, Hillary. <laughs> Your queer journey and then the importance of representation in the fashion world. Yes. Um, so, hmm. that is a very interesting question because, I mean, you can go <laughs> every which way. My queer journey, I would say, um, was uh, mostly closeted, I would say. And I think I, like, I'm, I'm very... I, I, <coughs> I'm very, um, I present very, I guess, uh, straight presenting. And so a lot of people don't realize that I actually am part of the LGBTQ plus community. And so I would actually say that tonight is my officially my first uh, professional coming out, if you'd like. Yeah, so yeah, so it's kind of a big deal and I'm happy to do it. And um, yeah, I just I think more visibility and just um, being able to be uh, proud of who we are and just having those like regular conversations because I'm often on photo sets or just on like you know in events and such like this and you know just being able to be myself and you know it casually you know talk about my life and that sort of thing so and it just ties into fashion of course because that's just where I work and this is my life so um, and just uh, I guess if I'm on the right track. The importance of representation. Yeah, that's the importance of representation. I would just like to say that, you know, I want to be the change that I want to see in the world. And so that's basically it. So uh, what you see is what you get. Amazing. Thank you. I feel like everyone on this panel is wants to be the change, right? That's why we're all speaking today. 
Amazing. Thank you. Now, Miles, we both come from the East Coast, and so I'm so excited to hear, although I do know quite a bit of it, but for everyone else in the room, more about your queer journey, specific, of course, to the fashion industry and the representation that you hope to see in the fashion industry moving forward. So I grew up in like a really tiny rural town out of Nova Scotia. Like there's literally 2,000 people there. There's like a pizza shop and a Home Depot and that's it. <laughs> so there wasn't much of a fashion industry, let me tell you. But, you know, I think when growing up for me out east, it was so hard because I didn't have someone to sort of like look to and to be in, and to aspire to, you know, like we li I literally didn't even have like internet or television. I was like so back in the woods. So I think like representation, especially in fashion and when we look at people on TV or in billboards or in magazines, I think it, it is so important because I think when we're younger, we need sort of that permission in order to maybe like move forward in who we are and discover who we are. And I think, especially with sexuality, it's hard to like really see that. So I don't think we can like look at someone and just assume what their sexuality is. I think it's more like our gender expressions that we might see um, in the media. So. I guess for me, like when I was out there, I was actually like studying to be an archeologist of all things. And I was just like, I kind of reached this point where I had survived a suicide attempt. And I was like, you know what? No, I need to like live for myself. And I need to kind of to your point, it's like I need to be that change that I see in the world. So I was like, you know, I think fashion is a really great way to sort of like showcase, I think, my gender expression and hope that I can kind of inspire other people because I think feel like my whole life everyone was like, you need to be a man and this is what a man looks like and a man has to act and behave a certain way. But that's like, it's just so toxic. I think that gender is such a beautiful spectrum and this sort of like I ideologies that we've created around male and female are, are really like a very like tight binary that I, I think everyone needs to like kind of break out of because I, I don't think we should be limited to uh, these sort of constructs so yeah I guess for me I've just been sort of on this journey of using social media as a way to kind of fight that so yeah amazing thank you no, your advocacy work is is above and beyond I think what people would expect of normal people with the platform and so I commend you immensely forever for the work that you are doing Mason take it away so it's your <laughs> turn um so tell us about your journey and the importance of everything to the queer community, what it means to you, and you, well, kind of ties into what you were talking about. Uh, yeah, so as I said, I'm from uh, Switzerland, so we can talk about small town after. <laughs> uh, I think the whole, the whole country is the size of Toronto. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So uh, yeah, growing up, I was uh, the same. I always uh, wanted to find clothing that I would like, and if you go to men's fashion, it's the fabrics are pretty boring, or the cuts, and then if you go to women's fashion, then it doesn't really fit any kind of body. So this is one of the primary thing why I started the fashion uh, brand, and genderless is really to to mix all those codes and to create something that people will enjoy and I would enjoy. I'm wearing what I'm what I create, um, and so yeah, it's, it was kind of always for me hard to find this representation of things that I like. And thankfully, I was in Switzerland, which is surrounded by Europe. So you have Paris, uh, Italy, and uh, I mean, France, not only Paris, uh, Italy and uh, England and all of that. So I always knew I would have to go away from Switzerland uh, in order to actually bloom. And um, yeah, so that's how I actually ended up uh, here uh, as well. Anything else? Did I forget something? No? <laughs> that's amazing. And now, same question to you. Okay, again, speaking, speaking about growing up in a small town. <laughs> um, I grew up in rural Mexico in a Mennonite town. Um, German as my first language. Um, and growing up in the 90s, supermodels were definitely my big inspiration, as y'all saw. As some of you might know me here, as y'all saw last week. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, how makeup helped me, how do I wear this? How makeup helped me find myself and my queerness um, was, well, first of all, I had to move away from a Mennonite community where it's still not accepted. Um, going home is still a challenge. Um, my family does love me, but it, it's a very different world that we live here. Um, but I find makeup is, was my way of expressing myself. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you see a macros of my eyes and my lips. That was my form of therapy almost. 
where I could express myself with color, with painting, which I always did with my mother growing up. Um, and then drag kind of happened. <laughs> um, it was always something that I was very inspired by. Like, drag queens, I find, are some of the strongest pillars in our community, in the queer community, that fight for a lot of our rights, that are, that are at the forefront of a lot of queer people and queer issues. So I find drag is a very wonderful art form where you can express yourself and maybe you're not able to express yourself freely feeling or looking at yourself the way you do, where drag can sometimes take that, it, what are the words I'm looking for? Um, it can, yeah, it's like an escape. Yeah, exactly, it's an Thank escape. Thank you so much. <laughs> It's an escape from reality, but also bringing all those issues into reality, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did I answer the question? Yes. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I, I tend to ramble. That's OK. Um, I will say for anyone who didn't know, Victor Peters was named a Fashion Canada's Best Dressed at a party this week. And that is what you are <laughs> referencing. Um, <laughs> And also, um, excluding you, small town gays who made it out is all I've learned so far. <laughs> I'm also from a small town. I, oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, inclusivity. Yeah, I'm from Creemore, Napanee. Oh, Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thought you were from Toronto, sorry. Um, next, Nancy, as a queer artist and photographer, how does your queerness inform your art and the lens that you see the world through? <clears throat> Um, I guess how it impacts my work. Um, I would just say that I think it's just a, an expression in terms of like um, being open and just seeing uh, exactly what I said before, seeing the change in, that I want to see in the world, I want to see in the industry and to just sort of like show each uh, individual's individuality and authenticity and, and just be authentic to that. Um, but also expressing my creativity through my work and like being able to show, um, I guess like in, in terms of like the projects that I do do as well and just ha being visible and being like here and doing these jobs and like representing the community as I am not just as queer, but also as like a Korean Asian community uh, female. Um, so that's also very important to me for that representation because I feel like that's not talked about a lot as well. So uh, I'm really proud about that. Um, but yeah, I hope that answered your question. Like, not really good at this. I'm behind the camera. No, you're doing an amazing job. You're doing an amazing job. And you answered my question perfectly because I definitely meant it as like a, as a black queer person. I look for those stories because I know they need that spotlight. And that's exactly what you're saying. That openness in your creativity is how you let people be authentic. And it's how you show those stories. And I know your work. And I know that you are that person. So thank you, Hillary. You know me so well. Thank you. <laughs> Miles, um, I'm gonna have a harder question for you. I'm sorry. I'm asking. I'm grilling everyone out here. Um, you've used your, <laughs> you've used your platform so publicly, and I was wondering if you were comfortable um, speaking to some of the exhaustion and psychological mental issues that come with being not only so publicly queer, but a queer advocate, an AIDS advocate, a sober advocate like myself. So it, I know it's not easy being on on screen all the time, putting all of these vulnerable things out there. So I was wondering if you could speak to that. Absolutely. I mean, I'm sure everyone in the room experiences how exhausting social media can be, right? I think it's so, you know, I think that people can be so horrible on the internet and kind of hide behind their keyboards, I think, with how they uh, maybe project, I think, a lot of their own insecurities, I think, onto other people and, and really have this irrational fear about things that they don't understand and they kind of take it out on you. Um, I guess like, yeah, I mean, it's hard to navigate sometimes, like, I, especially with TikTok and, and Instagram, I feel, feel like specifically there, you just don't know who's going to see your content. But I don't know, I truly believe that regardless of like how people respond, whether it's like positive or negative, I, I really try to look at it from a lens of like, that it's impacting them and it's causing some sort of reaction within people. And I hope that 
that in itself is like a seed of change that hopefully is now giving them a reference point to something that's in a positive light. Because I think a lot of the time, I think a lot of people look at like even just the 80s where we had like the HIV pandemic where you know we lost like 33 million people. And I think that that was a huge part of like what queerness was looked at and, and that, that was such a negative thing. And, but it's like we've evolved, I think, so surpassed what happened in the 80s and we're so much more than like our trauma and our pain. So I think it's really cool that we get to be in this moment of just like living in our joy and showing what queer joy looks like. So I hope that like now we can kind of like inspire people by that. Regardless if it's negative or positive, hear both sides. Yeah, I think it's important. Yeah, from where everyone's coming from. Amazing. Thank you both. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, Dan, can you speak about how championing gender fluidity clothing, how you've come to do that? You kind of touched on that, but like really how your brand has become very personal to you and the story that you're trying to tell to your customer and also your story. Uh, sure. So, um, so as we all know, actually, clothing doesn't have a gender. It's all about society putting a gender on it. And um, so I'm also very fond of uh, history of fashion. So it's very interesting to see and to go back even uh, centuries ago and to see all this mix uh, of different trends, different things, and different uh, garment constructions and how they've been interpreted into nowadays clothing. And um, I'm trying to actually take all those codes and really blur them. And uh, because I actually uh, have a background of tailoring and really doing custom made, the hardest part for me was sizing because you do need to fit all these beautiful bodies out there, but you also have to make uh, ready to wear clothing. So it's kind of have to find this right balance to, uh, to match all these bodies. And uh, that was actually the biggest challenge uh, of my brand, and I hope I mastered it now. <laughs> yes. Um, thank you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's what kind of the biggest challenge, and that's what I love about gender clothing is every piece is really thought to mix all those boundaries and to really recreate a new piece. So of course, we're not going to reinvent the skirt, we're not going to reinvent the pants, but just to give it a new twist, more modern, uh, more avant-garde. and. Uh, yeah, and then the, mo the biggest pleasure for me is to, to see people out there like you, you've been one of my biggest <laughs> supporters, taking those pieces and wearing them differently or even styling them in ways I haven't thought about. Um, same with you, my little mice. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's one of the biggest pleasure and that's what kind of makes my, my brand leave and why I keep doing that. I see it actually touches people and makes people feel, feel, feel happy about themselves. And uh, yeah. Well, I would say as someone who wears your brand, it is true. I always feel good and everyone's always like, what are you wearing? I'm like, how's it wear? <laughs> now, on to you. So, as a winner of Makeup Artist of the Year, yes, we're gonna get into that. <laughs> At CAFA, everybody, if you don't know what CAFA is, it's Canadian Art and Fashion Awards, happens every October. And so, can you speak on how makeup has grown as a tool of your queer expression? I know we kind of tapped into that a little bit with you know, makeup artistry within the queer community and for drag queens and also how you express yourself. But uh, can we get into a little bit more of the nitty gritty? Yes, of course. So, was that me? So I find <coughs> the way makeup has evolved with, alongside the drag community, where it's now so mainstream, I find people feel more comfortable expressing themselves with more makeup. It doesn't matter what gender you are. I find I see more men wearing makeup out as well, which I love seeing. And it's like, I grew up in a very heteronormative community where it was like machismo is a big thing in Mexico, um, where it was like, I never understood why as a man I couldn't wear makeup. But that was like me being delusional in a community like that. But I think that delusion helped me <laughs> get away from there and let me grow as a queer person and let me express myself with makeup. And I find, I, what I find so inspiring, I worked for MAC for a very, very long time. I will always have a love for them. Um, but what I found very inspiring is when mothers or fathers would come in with their little boys, this like mm -hmm. clearly very gay boy like the cute, like so cute, and would let them pick out either an eyeshadow or a lip gloss. It was like so inspiring seeing a parent come in and doing that. And I find 
we see that more and more in our society now, which I find so inspiring and freeing. Um, Cause why, yeah, like you said, clothing is genderless. Why does makeup have to be gendered? Mm -hmm. yeah. Amazing. Thank you. We actually have time for one more question. So I'm throwing a rogue one into the mix that you might not all be prepared for. Um, I'm curious, and it, it touches on Dan and House of Dweer. Um, how do you feel about the virality and trendiness of gender fluidity? And do you think that enough participants actually understand the education and weight of dressing as your true self and the importance of intentionally dressing in a gender non-conforming way? How? <laughs> Why do you have to say it like that? <laughs> so what, what you mean is... Um, I mean what I mean is that I think that we're seeing a lot of trends in, in terms of, you know, looking on magazines, social media, where we're seeing um, more... You, yeah, the construct is being finally broken down, but is it just a trend? Is it just to make money? Is it just for magazines to sell? Are people doing the research? Are they actually being advocates? Are they looking into it? And how do you, if you're someone like Dan, actually you know, championing this, how do you advocate for that in an appropriate way and make sure that if you're making a campaign, you're doing it justice? And I think all of you are championing this in your own way. But I'm curious, like, how, how do you feel when you see it becoming viral? Because it's, it's education and it's important, but also who's using it in a wrong way. And now I'm giving my opinion, so I'm sorry, I'm not a panelist. <laughs> it's really, that's such a can of worms question because you can, it's, it's like, obviously you want the support of like the mainstream, you want corporations to acknowledge it, but then there's like a fine line of like overuse of this and like basically making it sort of like a commodity and uh, you're making a commodity of your sort of individuality and that's really who you are as an identity. And so uh, it's kind of like, especially for younger generations like who are just trying to kind of figure out their identity too, it's, it's kind of a confusing time for them. But I remember growing up as a kid, like I went through so many different fashion trends. Like I thought I was like a, a K-pop, like, I don't even know, like, it was it was weird. Like, I, I watched a lot of Korean drama and like, I watched K-pop back, back in the day in the 90s. So like, I, I know K-pop's really popular now, but it was a totally different thing back then. So I, I'm just saying there's like a whole a, a thing with fashion. I don't know, I, I like it, I think it's good. Uh, it's good to have the diversity. I think it's important to see it. I think it's important. Um, but it's, uh, I think it's just about talking about it and, and talking about and acknowledging that there is that fine line. Thank you so much. Miles, same question. What do you think about the current trendiness of, of gender bending, gender non-conforming fashion? And is there a negative or a positive to this trendiness and virality of it? So I guess someone who works like a lot directly with brands, I feel like the biggest thing that I see that I think brands are not doing is like bringing the community to the table. I think like I just recently did a partnership with a brand, I'm not gonna name names, but they like we I created a set of content with them and then they just like didn't tell me that they were posting the content and this was like a women's wear store uh, like and they we didn't really have the time to create like a strategy of like the rollout of it and it was like this huge negative backlash like online and the post just was like it was they end up like removing the comments and then like that was that was sort of it and I just think that I wish that they would have like talked to me about like when we were going to post it so that we could sort of figure out like a strategy because I think it's like if you're just if you were a women's based retailer and then now all of a sudden you have someone who looks like me wearing the clothing of like of course people are going to be pissed off you know um it, so it's like how do we like educate how do we like teach not only just the staff but the consumers about this like whether it's a gender free like edit that's happening like within the store or something like that but and I think that that has to do with like a lot of things, even when it comes to, I think, like the racial issues that we're seeing. It's like, I think so many companies are like, OK, so we need like this many people of color and like one white model. And but they're not actually like bringing those people to the table to have these types of conversations. Like, I think it's connected. And, and I think that that's where we need to do better, I think, going forward. Thank you. Yeah, creating safe spaces for the people that you're actually working with. Absolutely. And I'm really sorry that that happened to you, by the way. Just that's awful. <laughs> Same question, Dan. <laughs> um, yeah, and also to, to add actually what Miles said, it's, uh, it's really also about the, the consumer to check uh, the brand actually if they decide to buy from something. It's not the same as greenwashing as well. Mm -hmm. It's you got to really uh, look into the website, look into the brand. Have they done something? Have they actually on the other side 
give money, donate money to um, to uh, another uh, body that is really going against the community. So it's really up to you um, to get this, uh, these questions out. Um, and yeah, and I don't like to call it a trend. Actually, I would like to call it a comeback because, as uh, as we saw in the in the disco area, like not so so long ago, is uh, where all the gender really mixed and all the clothing were really uh, switched in between all genders. So um, it's good to see that it's coming again and that people are embracing it on the street much more. And it always like that in all fashion, all the cycles. It goes from the street into the mainstream. So we are right now at that moment where it's coming into the mainstream, and it's just us to balance. Uh, this fine line as well, um, so it doesn't get overboard, kind of thing. Perfection. Now, I'm going to pivot it a little different for you. So, more in the way of makeup trends okay. towards, I have seen a lot more, you know, hetero men wearing makeup and putting that on. Um, so, like, there's some that don't really understand where some of the culture comes from, understanding it. And you can also talk into the whole gender fluidity clothing thing, too. Okay. <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> um, I love, like, I love seeing that, for example, one of my best friend's husband um, is so involved and into watching RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> and is such a fan of it. Like, if I've watched an episode before he's seen it, I can't ruin it for him. But I love that people like him are more accepting of, of the, the culture of drag. And the reason why I speak about drag so much is because it's, I work so, I'm so involved in the community and works, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and I work, I work with a lot of drag queens. And I, I love seeing that it is more mainstream. It's also very sad to see what's happening in the US with all the drag bands. Um, but there's also the other side to it. Like, we've come this far already, and just seeing how many people are accepting of it, and where straight men are feeling... What's the word I'm looking for? They, they're feeling more comfortable expressing themselves, even with makeup, or wanting to wear an eyeliner. Like, there's so many women that come, that come up to me and tell me about their boyfriends experimenting with makeup. And I, I love it. It's great. But I, like, <laughs> like, we all should, especially like with clothing. Like, there should never be, like, nobody should tell anyone what to wear and what not to wear. Like, it's such a, per makeup is such a personal thing. Everyone's going to wear it differently. I just did a master class before I came here. And that is one thing that I said. Where, like, somebody asked me where I get a lot of my inspiration from. And, and I said, people watching. I love people watching. <laughs> and I love to see how women or men or anyone in between loves to express themselves with makeup and what makes them feel beautiful. Because none of us will do the same thing. As a makeup artist even, I could do something completely different on you, but you will still feel more beautiful the way you do your own makeup. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's no right or wrong way. Amazing. Wonderful. So thank you all so much. Nancy, Miles, Dan, Victor, thank you so much for speaking today. That was all of the hard-hitting, I'm so sorry, questions <laughs> that we had. Um, and I also want to thank our sponsors for our VIP, uh, our panel gift bags. You all get gifts for having t like endured these last 39 minutes with me. All right, well, thank you so much, everybody. And it was such an inspiration to hear everybody's speeches. I, too, grew up in a small town in uh, Regina, Saskatchewan. Woo! I think I laughed at 250,000. So. <laughs> but no, I, I remember myself, you know, growing up and, you know, going to Le Chateau and being inspired by it. And I was like, oh my gosh. And that's how my love of fashion kind of evolved. And then I moved to the big city of Toronto to follow my, my dreams. So I definitely echo everybody here in, in terms of, you know, living your truth and making sure you follow the path, right? So, and I think in today's day and age, it's very important Brown to keep fighting the good fight. As we know, there's still a lot of work left to do. And I, I've, I applaud everybody here for, you know, being comfortable in your own skin and sharing your story. So thank you very much. Thank Big hand, round, round of applause, everybody. All right. 
So um, just to quickly before we break for some more fun and festivities with amazing drag performance from these lovely ladies in the corner over here um, who are ready. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, we uh, wanted to just let you know that FGI itself is looking for some board members uh, for th in the coming year. So if you're interested in joining our organization on the leadership team, um, we will have more information about that um, on our website as of tomorrow. Our little pride banner will come down sadly and then that information will replace it, just giving you a link of how to get there, find out more information, and then also how to nominate somebody. Um, we uh, also wanted to say, what else was I talking about? I blocked out. <laughs> Oh, yes. Yeah. So there are gift bags. Uh, they are at the very back of the room in these random, funky silver bags. Um, you, if you purchase a ticket tonight, you are absolutely designated one. We would love to share that with you. And then um, they're first come, first serve. So uh, we want to honor everybody. There's probably enough, but we're just flagging that. <laughs> Get it while it's hot. Uh, there's some good stuff in there. Amazing sponsorship, beautiful skincare, hair products from all of our amazing sponsors. Uh, for those who did buy event by tickets, just a reclaim your ticket with the lovely ladies in the back. You, we did s set some aside for you just so that uh, you know. So a little secret stash there. Uh, having said that, thank you again for everybody uh, for attending. This is our, we're going to be taking a little summer intermission. Our next big event is going to be TIFF. So we are collaborating Ooh. with my other company, uh, Hollywood North. <laughs> and we have some amazing other partners that we've teamed up with with FGI Toronto. And that's with CAFCAD, Jennifer over there at CAFCAD. And we also have Startup Fashion Week. I think Jody's here somewhere uh, for our next uh, event. So it's going to be held at Campbell House. Uh, TIFF, uh, so it's four days and four nights of diverse uh, programming. We're going to have free daytime interactive talks, so please come down. And of course, we're going to have a nice VIP party at the end. So, so please do get your tickets and make sure you join FGI for the membership perks. And online tickets will be going to members on July 4th. So you'll get be ahead of the curve for that. But of course, we'll be welcoming everybody. So thank you again, everybody for joining us, and I think we have some amazing talent coming up soon here. Yes, as Lindsay already said, next up is going to be House of Fantasy. They're going to be performing in about 15 minutes, so make sure you go take out any cash you want to tip your queens. Stick around, have a drink, a mocktail, a cocktail, whatever you prefer, and uh, we'll have drag next, so please. And uh, all the panelists will be lingering if you have any more hard-hitting questions. Again, I'm really sorry. <laughs> photo amazing you guys can all go back to chatting thank you all so much for your time <laughs>